Well, it's hello and good evening and welcome to episode 12 of Fracking Nightmare. Once again, I'm uh, uh, in the north of the country, up at the studio in Earlham. Um, it's uh, a little bit more uh, permanent than the tent and uh, also a little bit more sheltered from the elements. Well, the show, of course, should have gone out on Monday evening. But uh, on Monday of this week, I was actually giving a presentation to the Women's Institute in Tameside. Now, this is the first time I've had the opportunity to present to the Women's Institute on the subject of fracking. So it was an opportunity that I didn't want to pass up on the basis of it effectively being an audition and, and a vetting as to whether I am an appropriate speaker to present at other Women's Institutes. Well, it seems that I passed the audition and uh, already I'm receiving requests to speak on the subject at other women's institutes around the country. Now, the women's institute are certainly not to be underestimated. They're a very, very influential organisation. And I think it's certainly about time that um, we got this subject out to the women of this country. Now, since I was with you last week, and, of course, we announced that um, uh, Total had moved into the UK unconventional gas arena by buying a stake in the Dart Energy um, Joint iGas Petroleum Exploration and Development Licenses, numbers 139 and 140, in the east of England. In fact, these licensed areas cover western Lincolnshire and eastern Nottinghamshire. Now, on... The weekend just gone, there were a number of protests around the country at Total petrol stations. Well, it just so happens that Total have actually exited the UK retail market, but uh, nonetheless, those stations that are still branded as Total were indeed fair game, and a number were targeted. Not least the one at Bolton, just a few miles north of uh, Barton Moss, where Four protectors glued themselves to the pumps, causing the familiar faces of the protector, or actually it says protestor, removal team on the back of their jackets uh, to release them from their D-locks and superglue on the petrol pumps. Anyway, the iGas stock price continues to climb, although not quite as much as it did during the middle of the week. And uh, in fact, on... Uh, by Monday evening, Andrew Austin, the Chief Executive Officer of iGas, had actually increased his personal wealth by £5.1 million. That is the increase in the uh, market price of hit the stocks that he holds in iGas. But you'll be pleased to know that uh, his uh, personal stock holding uh, has, the, the amount of the increase has fallen to 03 4.37 million. This is still an awful lot of money and in fact is probably equal to the total income on the two housing estates closest to the iGas well site at Barton Moss. So once again this illustrates how there are a few people who will benefit enormously from the unconventional gas industry while the rest of the country suffers and has to endure the inconvenience and of course the potential contamination. Of course fracking is banned in France and has been banned since the decision, the presidential decision, was upheld by the Council Constitutionnel in October of last year, which of course makes it even more outrageous that Total have bought into the UK fracking market. But actually, you know, this is not a bad thing, because up until Total came into the arena, it was all small companies that nobody's ever heard of, like iGas, Quadrilla, UK Methane, Coastal, Celtic, Northern, Dart, not exactly household names that roll off the tongue. But now the majors have started to move in, it will make people take up a note. And, and the fact that Total has been, is the first to move into the UK market, having been banned from this activity in France, makes it even more interesting to people who question why it is that they're not allowed to frack in their own country, but they're 
now coming over here to frack the UK. Well, unfortunately, this program this evening is going to focus a little bit, perhaps for some too much, on the police activity at Barton Moss. On Monday evening, just before I left to drive over to Tameside to uh, meet with the Women's Institute there, unbeknown to me, an arrest was uh, being um, um, undertaken at the camp of one of the protectors who is renowned to the police, both as a legal observer and for his work in live streaming the events. Now, Chris O'Donnell was live streaming on Monday evening, and he was live streaming the trucks as they were exiting the iGas well site. As they came out of the iGas well site, he noticed that one of the trucks had an illegal rear license plate. And Chris tried to draw the attention of this oversight to the police officers. In fact, to about five police officers, all of whom chose to ignore him. When Chris tried to get the attention of the inspector, the senior officer on the day, Chris was then assaulted by members of the tactical aid unit, the TAU, known to members on the camp as both the tactical assault unit and, for obvious reasons, thugs are us. Now, whether or not they realised that Chris was live streaming or not, we don't know. The reality is that that footage was being broadcast on Bambooza live. That footage has now gone viral. That footage has been shown on Al Jazeera, on Russia Today, and a number of other independent TV stations around the globe. Unfortunately, what this footage demonstrates is how close we are in the UK to becoming a corporatocracy, where the corporations rule supreme and the police force is little more than the corporate enforcers for the corporations. Now the video that we're going to show you here runs for about 13 minutes. Towards the end of the video then the vision quality obviously diminishes as Chris is wrestled to the ground. He tries to put the camera in his pocket and at that point we lose the vision but we still have the sound. After the uh, video comes to an end, Chris was taken to the police station, where when he got to the police station, the desk sergeant there reeled in horror at the sight of Chris's injuries. Chris was subsequently taken to the hospital, where he was given a CT scan. He was actually taken out of the hospital by the police against the doctor's advice, taken back to the police station and released onto the streets of Swinton at 2 a.m. in the morning without any means to return to the camp. Fortunately, he did have his phone with him. I felt really bad the following morning when I switched my phone on. I'm in the habit of turning my phone off at night, only to discover that Chris had tried to call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. Fortunately, he had managed to rouse somebody else, and Chris did manage to get a bed for the night. Well... After you've seen this footage, we're going to take a break. And when we come back from that break, we'll be talking to Chris O'Donnell and he'll be able to share with you his views on what occurred on Monday afternoon at the hands of the Tactical Assault Unit, otherwise known as Thugs Are Us. Guys, we're back. All the protesters have been moved off the street, every one of them. And the trucks are now exiting. This video shall show that nobody is impeding the trucks or the gate. It's the first truck gone. Officer, 
Inspector, that truck there has no index plates on the back. Inspector, the truck that oh, it's, it, the truck that's just driven past, the orange truck that's just driven past in front of this one has no index plate at the back. Right. If somebody can please call 101 and inform them that the second truck in the convoy has no index plate at the back, that would be quite a wonderful thing to be able to pull the driver up on. Officer, I require your assistance. The driver of this truck has no index plates at the back of the van. Can I ask you to pull over, sir? You're in breach of the highways regulations. I know you can hear me. The index of the vehicle is Bravo X-Ray 54 Yankee Charlie Golf. Officer uh, 054, 14054, what do you think of this index? This is a quality of shit that we have to put up with from I guess and their representatives. Officer, this index plate. Anything strange about it? Any comments about the index plate? Officer 9225. I'd like that truck stopped and the guy detained and questioned about his index plate. I'd like to report this as a crime. Uh, detection is detecting crime at the moment. Right, so Officer 9225, onto the complaints. Thank you. Let's see how many other gimps we can get on this complaint. Officer 15829, can you have a look at this index plate on the way back? Because I'd like to make complaints against this driver and the truck he's hauling. How do I report this as a crime? You're a police officer, I'd like to report that as a crime. 15829, I'd like you to do your job. There are no police liaison officers. Why? This is my protest right here. If you can radio them, please, I'd like this driver detained. If the police are unwilling to detain him, we as civilians will detain him ourselves. We have a lawful reason to be able to stop a truck. The police are failing in their duty of care to the people on the highway. To prevent me stopping a truck myself that's currently break, breaking the law, could you have a look at the index plate and inquire as to why the driver sees fit to use this? Be careful. Officer 14992, I'd like to report this as a crime. Okay, thank you. Would you like to act on it, officer? So you're not taking the report of a crime actively right here in your face that you can see yourself. Thank you very much. This truck's driving with a very dodgy index plate. Every police officer in the street failing to take any action at all. I don't suppose I can get you to take any action against this truck driver with the missing index plate on the back. No. Every other bloody officer in the street's acting the same way, so I don't see why you'll be any better. Gimps, you're a sham. You say that you're here to facilitate our protest. Rot. We have a truck here driving with no bloody index plate at the back, and every police officer in the street is shaming your force and ignoring the fact that it's got no index plate.
Chief Inspector, no index plate. Any comments? Okay. Index plate. Can you see the index plate? Any comments? I pointed it out to about 10 of your officers so far, every one of them's neglecting their duty. We now have a lawful reason to detain a truck ourselves, sir. There's been another arrest ahead. Officers putting a gentleman into the recovery position. I'm, I'm keeping well away. I have no intention of obstructing anything. Are you okay, sir? Any idea where you've been detained? I notice you're put into the recovery position. Are you healthy and well, or have you been injured? Is anything happening about the truck? Fine. I've reported a crime to you, Chief Inspector. Fine, but Chief Inspector, I am moving. How much faster do you want me to walk? I've got a disability in my left leg that your force are more than aware of. I am walking perfectly well. I'm trying to ask you a question. I have reported a crime to you. I have reported a crime to you. Do you intend doing anything about it? I'm speaking to one of your Chief Inspectors. Can I on here? You'll be locked up. Yeah, for speaking to a Chief Inspector. Chief Inspector, a simple answer, please. You're all on video. Stop acting the way you are. You will shame your own police force. Look. Oi, Del boy! Listen. What are you doing about the truck, right. man? You want to obstruct police, all right? I'm not obstructing Fair any name. police. Really? Sorry. Really? Del boy, what the hell is this for, man? Why the brutality? Where was I obstructing any police? And I'm not fighting back or anything. Get your arm behind your back. I have no way there is no requirement for me in law to assist the police in any way. What are you kicking me for? What the hell are you doing up your back? Oh, 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 Although I calm down, do you understand? When you get police officers, you stay there and calm down. And yeah. I've not assaulted anybody. There may be. But there's no lawful reason to assist police. Is that yours? No, I think we've got to allow us to have one. Was it really necessary on a disabled person? Was it really necessary on a disabled person to kick the legs out of a disabled person? Was it necessary? Yes, I'm not fine. If I could try assisting you. One, two, three. Was that necessary? All I did was stood at the side of the road trying to speak to the officer, Chief Inspector. Really necessary? Yes, we were just in arrest. Resisting arrest? Yes. What was the arrest for? It was three, three of us, rather right uh, the bigger uh, lads than you. Adam, can you explain? Three bigger lads than me. Yeah, you can't explain, we're not speaking to you anymore. Right, I'll speak to you then. Three bigger lads than me. Go fish and smash my skull on the ground, Sergeant. Sergeant Shovel 986. Postal 67, 6279. 11, 597. Officer detaining me, can I have your number please? I'm not on the penny. You're not, you have hands on me. If you're not detaining me, why are your hands on me, officer? Uh, I'm entitled to the really details of anybody involved. Oh, you're the legal term, aren't you? I'm entitled to... No, I've got a lot more than that. Yeah. I've got a lot more experience than that. Get 
anything for anything for removing my body. Seven. Oh, right, mate. Right, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. You're right, mate. We're all right. Somebody in the back office, please, can call GBC and tell them that I've been detained. So That'd be very the much appreciated. Hope you find me. Yeah, happy days. Right, mate, yeah. 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 Did you find the microphone? Thirteen oh five three one three oh five three. Is the officer that was failing to give his number to me. You failed to give it to me when I was asking. You said that you'll give no information at all to me. It was heard on microphone then, you just said. Only because of course my neck went to see it. Officer, I require medical attention. Change the center. Yeah. I require medical attention. I don't care how you say I have been injured and I require medical attention. I think you know. Yes, really. So, officer. Sixty percent of the English countryside is under threat from fracking, a process which has transformed the landscape in many parts of the United States and Australia and contaminated the drinking water and air with highly toxic chemicals and gases. One in three hydraulic fracturing was using a carcinogen. So it really is a chemical cocktail that goes into the earth, of which up to 40% remains there. The grandchildren were in the bath and they started screaming and everything that was in the water was burnt. The MDs have been instructed not to report any negative health effects that they believe to be associated with living over a gas field. There's nothing inherent about the shale gas process that is going to lead to problems. Some of this material was actually taken to a large sewage treatment works, which had no capacity to handle radioactive materials of this kind. 800,000 gallons was dumped into the Manchester Ship Canal. 50 seismic events were recorded during just six fracking treatments. What is the minimum depth that the fracking will fracture? We can't tell you until we drill the exploration. Have you no idea whatsoever? Because it doesn't look like you've done your research. Shale gas is part of the future and we will make it happen. We are just numbers and we are sat on this rich vein of gas and they will do and say anything to get that gas out of the ground. Sixty percent. Um, barely forty-eight hours since that uh, incident, and um, I'm, the light in here is uh, fortunately for you not too bright, and I'm not too sure how well the camera's picking up the uh, injuries, but I can see that you've got um, well a, a black eye basically, yeah. and you've got grazing to your left cheek. And, and to your down, chin. Cuts on the side. Uh, the bruisings and abrasions continue all the way down. I've got a bust hand, a uh, ripped finger, a uh, busted rib. Uh, I heal, however, remarkably quickly. Re I, I heal at a remarkable rate. Hence the reason that the face, all the purple that was here just yesterday evening, is almost completely gone now. And... All my life I've healed very quickly, but that does not negate the fact that the gimps jumped me and bettered me 
and technically because when they searched me and removed everything from my body, from my property rather, from me, when I got to the police station, uh, when I got taken from the police station to the hospital and then back from the hospital to the police station and they asked me to sign for my property which had been delivered to the police station, none of my cash was there and my bank card wasn't there. Do you have that back now? No, I got robbed. By the police? Mm. So, um, I mean, obviously the police would not have realised that you were actually live-streaming at the time. Oh, well, they knew. They did know well, you were live-streaming. They know me, and they know when I've got the camera up like this, especially when I'm uh, speaking to people within the police force, I'm recording almost everything. So, I mean, we, we have nicknamed a number of the officers that are there regularly, and we heard you on the, uh, oh, on the film there me. refer to Inspector Del Boy uh, for fairly obvious reasons, his remarkable physical likeness to um, um, David Jason. Um, but nonetheless, he, he did not instruct directly the TAU thugs to attack you. So this was, it looks like almost a reflex uh, reaction that they just went in and pushed you to the ground. Well, I would dispute what you say about him not ordering them directly. He seemed to be in control of that entire unit. Uh, generally, there is a female inspector that's in charge of them. Of the TAU, yes, and Inspector Rose. The uh, bronze command, the most senior command on the ground, bounces sometimes between Chris uh, Delboy and Inspector Ross. Uh, e either of them sometimes could be the Bronze Command. Uh, so whoever is in charge of the TAU would it be directly ordering them, or the person above that, the Bronze Command, would be directly ordering that indirectly. So either one way or the other, he appears to have been in one or two if not both of the positions to control the TAU. But on the, on the film, I mean, obviously what we saw was you quite correctly, trying to alert the officer's attention to the fact that there was a truck there without a, a, a legal license plate. And you were, of course, being completely ignored. The fourth time I brought this up to the police's attention. Two weeks ago, that truck went down the lane to deliver, and the same day came back out again. All the way down, all the way back, I alerted police. Several days ago, it went into the facility. I didn't see it coming back out with the number plate wrong. I even checked my videos at the gates at the exit onto the road, watching all of the index plates on all of the trucks leaving. That one must have stayed inside for a couple of days. Just by chance, I wasn't expecting it. The second truck coming out, I noticed when I was counting the trucks out in the video, so the video is still pointing at the gate, and I'm looking at the trucks to see if there's anything particular, any uh, fluids coming off particularly, things like that. And I noticed, well, that's the truck that's got the dodgy index plate. Then I turned the camera and speaking to the police, and that's what set me off going through the fields. And from the from the reaction of the officers, we can pretty clearly see that there is one rule for the average motorist and another rule for the corporations who are trying to uh, effectively perpetrate this agenda because they're allowed to um, get away with this without any concern by the police. So, having tried to draw it to their attention, you then saw the inspector. Was he walking past you at that time? I can't remember directly right now if he was walking past me or if I was walking down to approach him. More likely I was walking down to approach him, I think. Because he would have been in front of the trucks, behind the front line of I protectors, so. yeah. And, and did, did you see the TAU actually coming at you or did they come at you from behind? No, they were straight in my face, literally. I'm trying to speak to the inspector. I'm being forced to walk backwards with TAU, the riot police, in front of me literally here and if you watch the videos of women walking down the street the TAU guys are right there no airspace at all groin against arse all the way down if that's not sexually humiliating to the women on the protest God knows oh it's, uh, it's um, reminiscent of the Miley Cyrus uh, so if twerking. they do that to women yeah what are they going to do guys of course, they're not going to feel the limitations that they would to toward women. And when I was trying to speak to Delboy, or Chris, or whatever you want to call him, the chief inspector guy, he walked away. I asked a question politely three times. When he ignored me, it's like, okay, you're now walking away, and I'm walking backwards away from you, so I need to raise my voice. So that's why I went, Oi, Delboy! To get his attention, he looked around. The conversation continued. At that stage, 
when the police officers decided, whilst I was still walking backwards, that A, I was obstructing the highway, or a police officer, I think he actually said. But more importantly, on the video and on a photograph I've found since, uh, you see uh, me uh, prior to the uh, Youth Offenders Institution, there's a possibility that the road from the main road to the Youth Offenders Institution might be getting considered by the police as being highway, and the rest of it is definitely footpath. Probably footpath, yes. I was on the footpath side. Mm. But my charge now is that I had obstructed the highway and uh, resisted an officer. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about what happened um, because they, they basically kicked your legs away from under you and forced you to the ground, many, many forced things. your face into the road, which is why you've got the grazing they didn't down your face. didn't force my face into the road as such, as when I had three officers behind me, the officer behind me to the left was kicking repeatedly at my leg. I have a disability in my leg, and there's an awful lot of numbness. Uh, anything touching my leg, even a hard hit, I don't feel. I would feel the transient vibration on the uh, medial side, but the lateral side, the outside of the leg, no sensation on after uh, traumas and operations. He's kicking my leg several times, leading me to go, hey, <laughs> what's he kicking for? My hands are up on my chest at this point. Police officers are uh, wanting to arrest me. Take your camera from you? No, the camera's in my pocket All right. at this stage, I believe. Yes, I believe the camera was in my pocket. At this, at this stage, and when the police want to arrest you, they arrest you. The police wanted to arrest me, I wasn't stopping them. If the police wish to have that arrest being more serious and handcuff you, handcuffs go in the front. There needs to be a distinct threat to people in the area for you to be handcuffed at the back. That is not a standard thing. It's threat as being standard by the GIMPs. So, I was explaining to them, my hands are here, if you want to handcuff me, fine. I kept my hands at the front, sometimes the handcuffs go like this, I even kept my hands like that. When the police weren't able to, or didn't want rather, to put the handcuffs on the front, they forced my hands to the back. The standing operating procedure at Barton Moss seems to have been to force people's hands behind their backs, regardless of the and reason for the arrest. And force the hands up in and the force air. force hands, yes. And March and people forward. Yeah. They're used to torturing people, I would say, the Greater Manchester Police. Well, I think, I mean, my observation is certainly, um, you know, having been very close to the TAU on many occasions in the front line, and there's some of them that seem to have a little bit of spark of life in their eyes, mm -hmm. but for the majority, they are soulless. And, and, and I think my concern is that these are the individuals who wouldn't hesitate if they thought they could get away with it mm -hmm. to actually torture people in, you know, to, for whatever purpose um, they felt appropriate. Yes, and I would continue a thread of what you were just saying there by introducing a very popular phrase that you hear at protests, the phrase that all cops are bastards. I previously have considered not all cops are bastards. Any cops watching, especially the TAU, with this tiny little spark of life left in you, if you don't stand up to the harassment, the abuse, and the mentality of your colleagues, you are bastards too. Pure and simple. I, I think some of the police at, at Barmas, and I will say, Chris, that um, three officers took the opportunity on Tuesday morning to sidle up to me during the course of the day to, uh, one, actually acknowledge that they were disgusted by what they had seen, um, and the two others basically said they were disappointed and um, uh, you know, wanted to distance themselves from that kind of behaviour. So, I mean, there is no question that you know, not all police you know, buy into this, mm -hmm. but unfortunately it's becoming, or should be becoming, increasingly apparent to many of the officers participating on a regular basis at Barton Moss that they actually are part of what is ostensibly a criminal organisation. Totally, 100% and the officers that have come up to you and spoken to you, they're the ones with the spark of life. Thank you for doing that. You need to do more. Pure and simple. You need to 
speak to more people about it, even if it's through an assumed name on a website or something. Uh, give the information out to WikiLeaks, other ag agencies like that. You need to stand up as a witness. You need to arrest your fellow officers. There needs to be a substantial change or completely any trust in the Greater Manchester Police and ergo every other police force in Britain, every other police force in Britain would be shit on as well. Well, well I think that's uh, becoming increasingly ev evident um, and, and I would say that we need those police officers that do have that spark of life to stay in the police force because yes. they can actually do a lot more by remaining in the police than, uh, than by being so frustrated and upset that they, they leave. You remember at Balcombe that several officers were in the same situation. One of the police liaison officers stood as witness at court against police arrests. Other police officers took the point of requesting to not be at the site, uh, walking away from the site literally. That was a shame. They were important at the site and we would have much rathered had them remain at the site so they could speak to their fellow officers. Yeah, I believe that there was something like um, 40 police officers who, through the Barton Mos uh, through the Balkham campaign, actually requested not to be assigned yep. to duty at uh, Balkham, uh, which unfortunately, because of police mentality, was probably a surefire way of assuring that they were assigned to uh, Balkham. But that also worked in the favour of the protection community. But what we're seeing now at um, Barton Moss is actually, I think there was the realisation that some of the regular officers there <coughs> were starting to, how should I say, have some, not necessarily respect for the protection community, but at least understand why they were there. They were doing their own research. And now what we're seeing is officers coming in from other stations who are coming into uh, Barton Moss completely green, knowing nothing about it and being briefed as though they're coming up against Al-Qaeda. But also at um, Balkan, the police coming down it came from multiple forces a couple of days That's ago. That's true. But they would be there for the entire day. They were there to facilitate the protest at Barton Moss. The police come down for half an hour in the morning when the trucks come in, then disappear. They come back in again later for half an hour when the trucks leave. They are not there to facilitate a protest, they are there to facilitate trucks coming down the road. Our protests are there 24 hours a day. At Balkan, the police were there 24 hours a day. At least it's more of an assemblance of them being there to facilitate the actual protest. Yeah. I, I think that, that's an excellent point and I think... But the uh, longer the police are there, like at Balkan, the longer the interactions can be. So maybe that's... No, that's, 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 it's a very good point. And I think that, um, once again, it, it reiterates the underlying issue that the Greater Manchester Police, and more particularly the, the TAU, who of course we have um, identified as Thugs Are Us, uh, they are there to facilitate the corporate agenda. And I mean, the, the uh, core issue here is, of course, that it's a corporate agenda that has no social mm. license because it wasn't part of the manifesto at the last election. So it's something that is being railroaded into this country and people need to actually you know, recognise this. But Chris, let's go back to um, what happened immediately after the arrest um, because that's the point at which obviously we lost the live link. Uh, so were you manhandled down to the paddy wagon or was that brought to you? Well, after the three officers uh, were behind me and one kicking my legs out from underneath me, literally, he had his hand at the back of my head. Another officer also had another hand on the back of my neck and shoulder area and they collectively and a third person then fell on top of them, forced me onto the ground like that. My head took the impact. Uh, at the time, I can't remember getting from the ground, I can't remember saying any of the stuff that's on the video that we've watched, but clearly I did. It's my own video of it, but I can't remember it. I can't remember walking to the gates that I stood next to. I can remember, however, stood next to those gates a couple of seconds after arriving, feeling remarkably faint and not asking any permission or anything or explanation. I just mumbled fainting or whatever I said and landed on the ground. The next thing I knew a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes later was repeatedly vomiting. There are signs of concussion. 
Mm. Not having any idea of what's happening to me. No memory of it. Vomiting. Three clear signs of concussion. A head injury is one of the most serious things that can happen to anybody. And how many people have died in police custody from head injuries? Seeing thugs like the Gibbs in uh, Greater Manchester Police assaulting me, taking me away and then refusing medical treatment. Ten times I asked for medical assistance. When I finally arrived at the police station, when I came through the internal door, there was a old-style prison door you see with the thick bars. Before I went through that final door, I could see a desk sergeant. I could see a desk sergeant ahead of me. And when I made eye contact with him, his face had a grimace on it, like he was going, whoa, what's up with this guy? So he was shocked at yeah, your appearance, yeah. at your physical appearance, yeah. I was composed all the way down. I had vomited twice in the police vehicle on the way down. Also, perhaps I should add, the police vehicle was the one that has a like a transit style bag, but four cells in the back of it. These cells, you could not fit a pillow horizontally onto. It was maybe a two foot wide bench by one foot wide. I have a disability in my leg. I can't make my leg go to a 90 degree angle. It sits forward. So how did they get you in there? They literally forced the door. I'm seizing the CCTV from the actual truck on the inside and the outside on the passageway that you walk up within the truck. On the inside of the cell there's CCTV, on the outside on the gangway there's CCTV. And I can come up with the proof where Atos themselves have measured the angling on my leg. It cannot go to 90 degrees. And if I sat in that cell again, we'd be able to measure the angle of my leg being less than 90 degrees when they forced the door. When they forced the door, the only way they were able to close it was for me to stand up and to literally move my foot backwards and my knee forwards. That's the only way I was able to do it without causing further injury to my knee. And how, uh, so you were locked in this cell, it, it, I, I've seen them, yeah. um, fortunately as yet I haven't seen the inside of one, um, but I've seen them as they've been pushing people into them, and uh, yeah, I find them disgusting, I mean they the are, tiny, they are you inhuman, put a dog in no, you wouldn't put a dog, it's a, it's a, you're right, it's too the small to be a kennel. The in the back of the small transit style vans or the escort <laughs> style vans, at least them, you can have three or four people sitting in the one cage, and on them I could have my leg extended. When I got taken to hospital, it was in a paramedic ambulance. On the way back, it was in more one of the civilised police vans. Still in the cage at the back. So how long did they actually uh, lock you in? So you were literally sitting in your own vomit mm -hmm. in this um, uh, uh, microscopic cell. Um, how long were you actually in there before they got you to the station? I would guess here, because there was no clock, and I didn't have my top telephone to look at, I would guess upwards of one hour. The van left from Barton Moss Road at the Young Offenders Institution and decided to drive down through the camp. Police station's the other way. But anyhow, goes down, turns around, then comes back up, passes where we originally started and turned left into the heliport where the police helicopter lands. There's a 20 minute, 25 minute delay there for no reason at all. And they know. The officers um, uh, in front of the van know that you're sick. Yep. Uh, I'm shouting, know. saying I'm being sick. I'm shouting, saying there's a deterioration. My head's getting very sore. The bleeding was still happening. And if somebody's seen the pictures previously, or the stills from my own stream, when people had seized the picture from the stream and made it into memes, well done on you. The full quality of that video at that stage hadn't even been uploaded. Now the legacy component of the data is there. The video is much better quality. But when people see that, uh, the images of me with the mud and the blood and the injuries and the big swelling in the face, that's what the police seen. And when I arrived at the hospital, one of the very first words were CT scan. And I was sent for the brain scan. Okay, Chris... Uh just as you're going in for your CT scan, we're going to take a short break and you'll be back with us in part three. Lovely. Well, I'm joined now by Chris O'Donnell, the uh, subject of the somewhat disturbing video that we've just watched. 
So, Chris, it's... Um... If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Right, I'm back here with uh, Chris O'Donnell and um, I'm sure if you've been watching the first uh, part of this interview with Chris, you'll be shocked, just as we all are, by his uh, treatment at the hands of the Tactical Aid Unit, otherwise known as the Tactical Assault Unit. Yeah, that's, I thought that was the official No, name. the official name is Tactical Aid Unit, but we all know them Madeline as Tactical Adrian Assault Press Unit. are saying Tactical Assault Unit. Well, that's, I think we all know that's a euphemism. But um, also known as Thugs Are Us. Um, or Riot Police or Soccer Hooligan Violence Team. Whatever you want to call them. They're the worst of the worst in the police force. Most of these guys probably wouldn't get jobs as nightclub bouncers because they're uh, out of control, as we have seen. But um, we got to the point where you were taken to hospital and uh, upon being seen by the doctor, they immediately suggested that you needed a, a CT scan. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I, uh, as it happens on um, uh, Monday night, I was actually speaking at the uh, Women's Institute in Ashton. And when I got back to the camp, the first thing I did was inquire about your uh, well-being. And I met with a couple of the ladies who had been to hospital. Uh, and based on their report of what they'd seen, I certainly didn't expect you to be released from the hospital anytime soon. But um, you didn't actually stay in hospital too long. I was there for quite a while, actually. Well, quite a while is, what, three hours? Well, three or four hours, yes. Yeah. But it's not as if it was... Well, when... Well, I won't speak about a previous case, but treatment in the NHS hospitals, especially on a Monday evening, is not going to be a fantastically busy place. But uh, even at that, uh, when the two ladies that you uh, mentioned just now came in, I was in the waiting area for waiting for the CT scan. I'd only arrived five minutes previously. As soon as they walked in, the police officers seen smiles in these ladies' faces. Very welcoming. Straight away, both the police officers stand up and start marching towards the women. You can't speak to him! It's a public place. Anybody in that room, and the waiting room had many people in it, they were more than welcome to speak to me. Or just speak out loud. And it's up to me if I want to speak. I have the right to remain silent. That doesn't force me to remain silent whenever the policeman wants me to. If they take me into a public space, I'm in a public space. It's up to me what I do with my voice, and it's up to the public to do as they wish. Part two, uh, these ladies, was another six people. Eight people in total, I believe, maybe a little bit more. One of these people was my lawyer, Stephen Brooke. And he was uh, threatened by the police with the rest, pushed away by the police. Were there still TAU officers that were accompanying you? This I is don't it? believe so. I think these were to standard police. Mm. But apart from uh, threatening arrest on everybody and personally pushing my own lawyer, who had requested to see me, preventing my lawyer from seeing me, even just in a public arena like the waiting room, uh, one of the police officers then literally told him to fuck off. Which, of course, if he had said to the police officer, would Section have... Section public order. Would have been an arrest, an arrestable offence. We've got video of the police liaison officers at the protest at Barton Moss swearing at protectors and protesters. We've got plenty other allegations from the TAU where they are swearing at people. Professional standards are looking into my video. Let's send lots more videos to them so they can work out the professional standards of their force and create some, because there's bugger all there to begin with. 
No, absolutely, and um, especially as uh, it has been made abundantly clear right from the very start of the Balkan campaign that the emphasis here is peaceful protest. And there certainly has not been a single incident, either at Balkan or at Barton Moss, where any protector has even got close to inciting any act of violence. And of course, if they did... Why bring such a hugely professional anti-terrorist type, let's fight everybody and mash their heads, team in? One of these TAU guys, his mobile phone rang the first day of the latest uh, whole gate hmm. incident. And I can't remember, maybe the other guys outside will recognise the song, but the one who goes, jump around, jump around, jump up, jump up and get down. It's like, okay, it's a team of people that specialise in jumping on people's heads and the ringtone is jump around. Hmm. I think the police should be whiter than white especially in the public face like this. There's no need at all for thugs to come up against a peaceful protest. At all. Nobody at our camp has ever been charged, or at least found guilty, with violent offences. Nobody. So why bring thugs against us? It's a peaceful protest. There is one team within the police force, however, within Greater Manchester Police, that I'll refer to as being officers from Greater Manchester Police, as opposed to GIMPs, is the police rescue team. They do generally, there have been a couple of small incidents uh, where we've had reason to complain, but the vast majority of the team there are professional and do a bloody good job safely. I, I would have to acknowledge that the uh, protester removal team... Yeah, T-O-R... Yeah, protestor. Protestor removal team, um, every time that they have been called into action, they've, they have behaved and conducted themselves with nth degree professionalism. Um, right from the moment they arrive until the moment that they hand over the uh, protester to the arresting officers. Um, unfortunately, this kind of behaviour doesn't seem to uh, percolate amongst the other uh, elements of the force. So, just coming back to the point, um, after being in hospital, I think it, it got to the point where the hospital actually felt that you were um, sufficiently traumatised to warrant spending the night in the hospital, but the um, police had other ideas. Well, the, the police, because people had turned up at the hospital, uh, the two ladies, as soon as they turned up, and then the further six sorts of people, including my lawyer, as soon as they turned up, the police panicked, pretty much big style, called for reinforcements, called for all the security at the hospital to attend also, and then fast-tracked me. The NHS know me very well. I set up most of the security systems for them. When I got into the ambulance, I was speaking to the paramedics, well, even in the police cell, speaking to the paramedics and the amount of camaraderie and solidarity that they were showing immediately was pretty decent. And already I know, as a paramedic delivery, I'm fast-tracked. Speaking to the nurses and recognise the computer systems or whatever, it was like, oh, you work in the NHS. Bang, fast-tracked a little bit more. The police then had me moved into private rooms and jumping queues and whatever, just because they didn't want the risk of eight people seeing a peaceful individual. So the three hours possibly might have been much longer without the police facilitating and speeding up the protest. So when, when did they actually take you out of the hospital and take you back to the police station? Just back at the police station, I think, for 11 o'clock. For 11 o'clock? Yeah. Okay, so um, you were then uh, at the police station, uh, I guess thinking that you were going to be spending the night in cells? Um, and possibly taken to court the next morning or given bail I conditions? I fully intended refusing any bail conditions and going to court the next morning. This is an important fact here. I was not once cautioned at the point of arrest. The only caution I ever received was the very final five minutes in the police station when they went, uh, caution, blah, blah, blah. Part of the caution is if you... Uh, don't uh, say now things you later rely on in court that might be held against you. 
after telling me this, and a couple of moments later, it's like, we're bailing you. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I have plenty to say. You're telling me that things I don't say now might be held against me at court. I have plenty to say. I've got so much to say, you might need a couple of extra hard drives what? to record all this stuff. We're going to be here for a few days, the stuff I need to tell you, because I don't want to forget to say something. Thank you, Prashna, for that line. But the police refused to allow me to be interviewed under the standard conditions of a recorded interview with my lawyer present. Even if I didn't have my lawyer present, when I requested an interview, the police went, no, we're not interviewing you. We're bailing you straight to court. So, so have, you st have you been formally charged with anything? Yes. Okay, and what have you been formally charged with now? Obstructing the highway, when it was literally the footpath part that yep. was on. And... Uh, it's not obstructing the place, it was... Not obstructing an officer in the course of his duty? No, no, no it's uh, something to do with arrest, like resist resisting, resisting arrest. Resisting arrest. Resisting arrest, okay. So, Sorry about the mumbling that piece there. But yeah, uh, I'm stopping the highway and resisting arrest. You'll hear on my audio that I was arrested on the scene for obstructing the police. On the video, you'll see another guy that we commonly refer to as Jesus, because it looked a bit like Jesus, just a European version, that was on the ground as I approached. He was getting moved into the recovery position. Next to me, he was advised that he at the scene, he was being arrested for obstructing the highway. When he got to the police, I was sat next to him in the reception area as he's being booked in. He's told straight away that it was obstructing the highway. He's, uh, yeah, uh, obstructing the police. Uh, I'm getting confused here. <laughs> Spot the grogging, uh, the noggin. Okay, <laughs> all right. I was, having, uh, I was told I was obstructing the police. Jesus was told he was obstructing the highway at the scene. When we got to the police stations, individually at separate times, they were transposed. I was given his charge, he was given mine. Some arrest of officers, perhaps. Maybe they screwed up. In reality, of course, um, and we, we pretty much know that all these charges are going to be uh, dismissed when eventually they appear before the magistrate's court, and I think the police know this as well. So I don't think it will get to the magistrate's court. Because one of the reasons I think that they didn't interview me and failed to interview anybody now, the Great Manchester Police now, from our camp, refused to interview people. I did not realise that that was now standard practice by the GIMS when they were treating peaceful protesters. One theory, straight from Barrister in London I spoke to yesterday, was that anything you say uh, in the uh, interview is permanently on record. If they want to arrest you and have no intention of you appearing in court, because anything you say in court is permanently a record. If they drop the case before it gets to court, they've just got a long time of fear and intimidation on you. Yeah. And police bail restrictions. And of course, I mean, this is this is in reality um, the modus operandi here. It is fear and intimidation they're trying to create. When in fact, actually, what it's doing is having the complete opposite effect. We notice it. But all it does is it gives us extra empowerment because we know that anything that is getting taken towards us now by Greater Manchester Police is fake, intimidatory bullshit, for want of a better word. Well, you know, Chris, I um, spoke to uh, the, the police and senior officers um, last week and uh, I tried to explain to them that whenever the TAU came on the front line, I knew that I was pretty much going to get some very interesting footage, which I would probably put out that evening, and uh, it would be pretty good publicity for our cause. When they had the normal police officers on the front lines, there would be peaceful protest, it would actually be a sort of pretty reasonable demeanour. I mean, we've even had a couple of inspectors on the line that haven't had the operation yet and still have a sense of humour. Yes. And uh, it's been a very... Normally, when the police, when the standardised police units walk us out, sometimes it is still a little bit fast. So our protest would be like the pace. If you don't like the pace, or if we stand still, 
during the protest, it's up to the court to decide the proportionality, not the police. Well, exactly. But normally, when we get to the end of the road, one way or the other, when it's the normal civilised police, when we get to the end of the road, there's applause. Not sarcastic applause. No, no, no. Which we exactly. sometimes do to the thugs. TAU. So given the choice, I mean, given the choice between the sensational footage that I get to get out to the wider community and the peaceful protest, I'm going to go for the peaceful protest every single time because that's what we're there for. And in theory, that's what the police are there for, to facilitate peaceful protest. But actually, the uh, reality is that in their quest to enforce a corporate agenda, they actually serve to help us get the message out to the wider community that this is something that actually requires the participation of the general populace because if we don't stop this, not only is the country likely to be totally fracked, but we actually, through our acquiescence, accept that we are moving ever quicker towards a corporate police state. Yes, and I think that enough people have seen my video uh, from the Bambuser account and on YouTube or whatever to know that it is risky and the statement I put out yesterday literally one of the last couple of lines says that there is a distinct risk to life for people involved in the protesting so anybody that wants to come to a nice peaceful protest we supply the peaceful protest we can't guarantee your safety when the TAU are around. So please do not attend when the trucks are arriving in the morning and going away in the afternoon. Approximate times here keep away between 8, 8.30 and 10 o'clock and say 1.30 until 4 o'clock. That's when the TAU are around. That's when the threat is there. I, I mean, I, I would have a slight um, variation on that. Um, not everybody needs to be right in the front line. I agree. You know, and, and um, you know, the front line obviously is certainly the focus of the TAU attention. Well, would but you it's agree quite that possible. Anyone stood outside a tent, if the police are coming down, will just sweep you into the pile. Go, keep on moving, please. Absolutely, but I think that also people can be walking a few paces in front of the front line mm -hmm. and yes. stay out of the clutches of the yes. TAU. I think what is important. Ideally, if they're able-bodied and not limping or whatever, yeah. then yes, there is a safe buffer zone. Yeah. That's generally where the PLOs, the Police Forward Intelligence Team, the police liaison officers, that's where they hide themselves. Well, we, it needs yeah. numbers. You know, basically, this agenda does not have social license. Unfortunately, democracy relies on the vast majority of the population descending into abject apathy. And whilst maybe for you know, much of the time that's okay, this is one particular issue where that is not an option. We're 64% of this country now up for grabs by the uh, um, fracking industry. This is not a question not in my backyard. It's, it's got to the point of uh, not in my country. We need as much support as possible. But Chris, before we leave, uh, and I think obviously um, uh, it would be appropriate for me to... You know, acknowledge that I'm sure everybody watching this is uh, deeply saddened that uh, this has happened in the UK. Deeply saddened that uh, it's happened to um, you know what once was uh, a police force that I think many people in this country would have said we could be proud of, but um, that's not the case today. And of course, the sad thing as well is that most of these officers will not be police officers probably within the next decade. They will be wearing the private security uniforms of G4SS, which will be the TAU version of G4S. So, but before we go, Chris, maybe um, if you don't mind, I, we, we give the light here and we've been trying to show your best side. So perhaps we can actually bring the camera onto your, on, onto your wounds here. And um, the people watching this program can see the handiwork up close and personal of thugs are us. But there's the rib marks, there's the uh, big uh, hematoma, or whatever it's called, behind the knee. Uh, I don't know if that's from the kicking, that the police were kicking into it, because I don't know exactly where they kicked. I'm looking forward to seeing that video.
And speaking about video, when your camera was sat still, I'm sorry about moving around so much, but my back is killing me, my legs are killing me, and it's almost impossible to sit still. Well, Chris, I, I mean, I know that uh, obviously at the moment you've got uh, bail conditions which um, can be broken, <laughs> indeed, and It'll of course be broken. will be broken, and uh, that means that you will be taken back into the magistrate's court in Manchester, where the bail conditions will be lifted immediately. And, um, you know, I'm pleased to acknowledge that uh, based on what we're seeing going on in the south of England, with the cases being heard in Brighton from uh, the Balkan campaign, and uh, the Crown Prosecution Service has effectively been invited to reconsider whether it wants to pursue those cases. And uh, as we've discussed here, I'm pretty sure that the vast majority of the arrests that we've seen at Barton Moss, uh, including your own, will uh, quite possibly never see the inside of a, of a courtroom. Fear and intimidation will not work. I'd like to ask all of the other police forces in England and Wales particularly, but also Scotland, uh, Police Scotland, watch all of the videos and learn how not to do facilitation. It's our protests, we will come after every police force, every chief superintendent or more senior officer, every police and crime commissioner, every single individual officer and any sergeant or above that's giving direct orders and forcing and acquiescing or whatever. If you give in to the orders, you're responsible for your own actions. Every one of you, we're coming for your pensions. If you mess with us, we will do it legally and properly like you don't. Through the courts. Yeah. Absolutely. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you a uh, speedy recovery. And um, I know, of course, that uh, we'll see you back on the front line. And uh, I would encourage people to uh, look out for your live streams on Bamboozer. Your Occupy normal... May Day on Bamboozer. Occupy May Day on Bamboozer. All one word. Occupy May Day. Occupy May Day on Bamboozer. And um, uh, look, because you're normally right out there, uh, along with one or two of us, right in the front line there, catching the action. I'm recording it for later transmission. You're putting it out uh, live. And, um, you know, ultimately, we will win this. The British government have no mandate. The police have no mandate to behave in this way. And uh, ultimately, of course, I have the absolute uh, faith that justice will prevail in this country. Thank God for our judiciary. Yeah, they're good. They are holding our back. They've got our back by the sounds and looks of things, particularly in the magistrates' courts at the moment. Thanks, Chris. See you soon. See you.